Hey friends, let's go ahead and get started with practice sheet 11-10. For questions one and two, we need to use this image here to help us find the quotient. So they begin by asking us how many thirds are in one, just one whole. Seems easy enough. There are three thirds in one whole. And we can see that in the image, if we count, here's one, two, and three thirds. Then they ask us how many thirds are in seven holes. So there's a picture here that shows us seven holes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna multiply seven holes times three thirds for a total of 21 thirds. Okay, let's look at number three. In number three, we're asked to complete this expression, three divided by one half. And it specifically asks us to draw a picture to find the quotient. So let's look at what they'll look like. Okay, three divided by one half. Another way to think about this is we're going to divide to try to find the number of halves in three holes. So if I drew a model to represent my three holes, let's see, where's my shapes? Here's one hole, two holes, and three holes, and I cut each one in half. Okay, now let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six halves in three holes. Or in other words, three divided by one half equals six. Okay, let's look at another example. Four divided by one eighth. Another way to think about this is to say, we're going to try to find out how many eighths there are in four holes. So if I draw four holes, and divide each one of them into eight equal pieces, I'll get my answer. Okay, so here's my eight holes. Remember, we're gonna start referring to whole numbers as integers. So eight is an integer in this problem. It's a whole number. Any number that's not a decimal or a fraction is an integer. Okay, so here's my, oh, I'm doing this wrong. I need four holes, not eight, my bad. Whoopsies. Let's get rid of them. Trash. Trash. Okay, now we're on the right track. Sorry. Four, four holes divided into eight equal pieces. So let's see. One, two, three, four. There's eight. eight, eight, and eight. So how many eights are there in four holes? There are 32 eights in four holes. Okay, for questions five and six, we're going to use multiplication to find the quotient. We're going to figure out how many thirds there are in six. So if I visualize six holes, each one divided into three equal pieces, I can do six times three, and that will give me 18 thirds. So the answer to six divided by one third is 18. 
Let's do the same thing for number six. We're going to figure out how many tenths there are in five. So if I imagine five holes all lined up, each one of them divided into 10 equal pieces, I know that there are going to be 50 tenths in five. Five divided by one tenth equals 50. Now, if you're in shock right now, you should be, because this is something that looks very different from the division we're used to doing. Typically, up until this point in the fifth grade, when you divide something, you're used to your answer getting smaller, but that isn't the case here. My suggestion is take careful notes, draw pictures, and refer back to your notes often as we continue to work through this topic. Okay, let's look at number seven. Julie bought three yards of cloth to make holiday napkin rings. If she needs three-fourths of a yard to make each ring, how many rings can she make? So we're going to take Julie's three yards of cloth and divide it into sections that are each three-fourths of a yard. And we're going to figure out how many groups of three-fourths or how many portions of three-fourths there are in three. Let's show this with a tape diagram. So I'm going to cut this long strip that's going to represent the cloth into three pieces and these three pieces each represent one yard of cloth. So one yard two yards, three yards of cloth. And each one of that, each one of those yards, we can cut into four equal pieces. Okay, now, each napkin ring is going to uh, consume three-fourths of a yard of cloth. So here's one section here that's three-fourths of a yard large. That's going to make one napkin ring. Here's another section of one, two, three-fourths of a yard. That's napkin ring number two. Here's another section that's three-fourths of a yard. Whoops, I almost made it four-fourths. My bad. Three-fourths. That's napkin ring number three. And then here's one more section that's three-fourths of a yard of fabric. And that's napkin ring number four. So we can make four napkin rings. Three divided by three-fourths equals four. Okay, let's wrap up by looking at number eight. When you divide a whole number by a fraction with a numerator of one, meaning the top number is going to have a one, explain how you can find the quotient. So we're gonna take a whole number and just name that n. Divided by any unit fraction, like one half, one third, one fourth, What strategy could we use to take a whole number and divide it by a unit fraction? So remember, any fraction that has a numerator of one, we're gonna call that a unit fraction. So one half is an example of a unit fraction, one third is an example of a unit fraction, and so is one fourth. What strategy did we use? Well, in our previous examples, we took our whole number and divided it into portions using our denominator. And then we counted up how many of those portions we had. So 
just for an example, if we wanted to figure out um, 3 divided by 1 half, that was one we did earlier, we took 3 wholes, 1, 2, 3, we divided each one into two equal pieces, so we used our denominator for that. Or you could just say we're dividing each one in half because that's the fraction that we're dividing by. And then we count up how many of those portions we were able to make. So we were able to make one, two, three, four, five, six halves. So think about what is a sentence that you could write that tries to, to describe the strategy that we've been using today.